very much uh, indeed. Um, I think it's interesting to state that uh, regarding non nano-based uh, health products, you still uh, feel that the existing uh, definitions and, and regulations are uh, sufficient to deal with them. May I now uh, switch uh, to our Chinese colleague and ask him for his presentation. All right. Um, so this is my second year sitting in this uh, hot seat. Try to be summarize what happening in China about uh, nanomedicine development. But actually, if you see my affiliation, I'm I'm a full time researcher. So uh, work at the National Center for Nanoscience and Technology. Um, in China, the uh, we have the China Food and Drug Administration uh, in take care about the uh, nano drug. Um, and also the medical device, and also the in vitro diagnosis approval. Um, so I just uh, summarize uh, what ha happened uh, in the current uh, status. So I probably spend a few uh, words on the approved drugs so far already circulated in, in the market. And also I probably will emphasize some of the basic research on nanomedicines and also on the nanotechnology enabled uh, in vitro diagnosis. And it, it, in terms of the preclinical or clinical investigational drugs, uh, I haven't got a lot of uh, data, um, but uh, we do have some uh, uh, recently uh, implemented approaches to to try to solve such current uh, challenges. Uh, so this is the slide I summarize what what currently uh, circulated in the market in China. Uh, this is not uh, for the comprehensive coverage, but the main. Um, uh, nano drugs or new formulations I can find from the website of the CFDA and if you look at this table uh, basically that's uh, uh, chemotherapy drugs uh, uh, with uh, a lipos liposomes formulation and then there are also, also some the recombinant human proteins we also considered when they pegylated as a new formulation we considered uh, in a broad aspect as a new type of nanomedicine. And also w w there is um, another um, microvesicle based uh, pros uh, prostaglandin E1. Uh, it's, it's not in the nano size, but because of the very close to uh, our uh, nanomedicine uh, mainstream uh, 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 ideas, so I also list it here. And also very recently in this year, we also uh, got a, 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 a progress based on the BMP2 based uh, the uh, um, biomaterials implants for the bone repair. This is already got proved and will be circulated in the market. And this is very, you look at the, this, uh, the, uh, the, the summary, the, not a lot of nanomedicines uh, used in China. And, but you look at the basic research, we do have a lot of active researchers. And particularly in China, the most strength field probably is in the material science, and also follow that is um, chemistry. So then we have a lot of uh, new materials generated. Um, um, and since 2006, and the Ministry of Science and Technology and the National Nature Science Foundation start to support the major or mega projects associated, closely associated with nanomedicines. And if you look at that, the, the, the titles or the main focus, mainly on the, uh, at the beginning, is focus on nanotoxicology and nanosafety issues, and also the interactions of uh, nanoparticles with cells. And later on, uh, up to 2012, so um, we start to work on the tumor microenvironment regulation and targeting by functional materials. And if you look at there are two uh, numbers. So, so for example, Yuliang Zhao's project started 2006, but got renewed 2011. So that's uh, one of the major um, uh, projects working on nano safety. And in, in sum up, we probably so far uh, have uh, something like 20 projects, each of them um, probably 30 million RMB uh, for five years. 
and also we also that's from supported by most, but also have something like 10 to 20 projects, uh, a little bit sl sl uh, smaller than that most project. Um, but if you talk about a broader view of, uh, in the nano materials, there will be much more than the projects we listed here. Uh, but from this uh, list, we also see that our center, National Center for Nano Science Technology, is really uh, one of the key players in, in, in the field. And then how about the preclinical and clinical investigational drugs and all other uh, nanomaterials-based uh, diagnosis? Um, um, the, so far, uh, we, we haven't really have a uh, clear uh, website. I can check all of these things. But from the, every time we went to the, uh, um, the, so the products evaluation meetings, we, we do know a lot of such uh, uh, projects or the uh, trials undergoing. But the problem or challenge so far we have is we don't have a very standardized uh, characterization platform urgently needed. And I'm talking about the platform mainly for the nanomaterials can be uh, fully characterized in biological systems. And furthermore, uh, their lack of accurate quantitative measurement about in vitro fate of nanomaterials, how they metabolize in the body is most of the cases we don't know. And if you're talking about uh, pharmacokinetics, uh, here we refer to the particle kinetics uh, is also hardly to follow in vivo. Uh, so furthermore, I think uh, whenever we see the applications, uh, the, the, uh, the complicated manufacturing procedures make the, f the final products is hard to uh, um, control. So all of this, uh, I think, that's what I, my personal perspective about the current challenges we're facing in the field. So clearly we got that there's uh, no very clear guidance for this uh, clinical approval for both um, nanodrugs nano and the nanomaterials-based uh, uh, diagnosis uh, devices. Um, but I do know that um, since uh, the end of this year, all of the previous approved uh, biomaterial-based uh, diagnosis or uh, implants, they will be re-evaluated. Because we all know that in 2006, CFDA has a major transition. So all of this uh, uh, approval regulation just got back to the uh, central uh, office, not in the provincial level. And to tackle these uh, challenges, I think recently Chinese Chemical Sciences launched a flagship program uh, in nanomedicine. Basically, there are several major things. The first is we would like to have a nano safety evaluation platform. In this case, we will use nano silver as an example to set up a standardized evaluation procedure. And also, we try to have some guidance for the manufacturing facilities and also for research laboratories work with nanoparticles uh, manufacturing. And next, probably we would like to support a few uh, nanodrug projects for uh, preclinical and clinical investigation. Um, hopefully we can get the, the stage uh, for the CFDA approval. And also the same case for the nano devices. So now uh, our center is really leading this uh, flagship program. And in probably in next f uh, one or two years, we were going to set up a research excellence center based on our current uh, setup. I hope we will integrate all of the country's uh, uh, skill sets and also manpower to have a better solution to promote the whole field uh, progress. Thank you.